Good evening from ABC News headquarters in New York. I'm Sam Donaldson. A flood in West Virginia may have drowned almost 100 persons. President Nixon flies to Shanghai for his last full day in China. Israel attacks again in Lebanon. The UN Security Council meets but takes no action. And Senator Muskie strikes back at his most persistent critic in New Hampshire, newspaper publisher William Loeb. Details of these and other stories in a moment. The ABC Weekend News with Sam Donaldson is brought to you by... Dodge. Pen... No discusses the drive. You've got to be comfortable. And man, you've got to have quiet. So what I do is plant my feet, extend my right hand, and open the door to my beautiful Dodge Monaco. Monaco's got unibody construction, torsion quiet ride, and that adds up to a ride as smooth and quiet as I'd ever want. So go tell your Dodge dealer that you want to drive the way Lee Trevino drives, in a beautiful Dodge Monaco. This is one of the leading paper towels in the West. It's very absorbent. But it doesn't absorb as fast as Viva. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, let's find out. Viva absorbs a lot faster. In fact, Viva absorbs faster than any of the other three leading brands in the West. And Viva is strong. Viva, it absorbs faster. Coal mining country. It usually strikes in the depth this time. Taken the a report from Smith. Stopped in Logan County, West Virginia, but the damage from three days of persistent rainfall catastrophic. A mountain rain and snow barrier near Man in Logan County. It sent a 20 foot wall of water spilling through a valley dotted with small indicate that the town of Laredo was completely wiped out. Governor Arch Moore, earlier in the day, Logan County a flood disaster area. The governor attempted to make inspection by means of a helicopter, but was turned back by bad weather. National Guard units and Red Cross volunteers are on the scene. Guard helicopters had at least 20 injured persons in a flood-stricken area. The dead are several children. Their bodies were taken to a temporary morgue at an elementary school. One eyewitness a sheer disaster. She said she saw up and down in a creek. The Guyanot River is still rising and isn't expected to crest until tomorrow. feet above. With water still on the rise, it will be some time before the full effects of the disaster are known. It could go down as one of the worst in West Virginia. Bob Smith, WHTN-TV, Huntington, West Virginia. A report on the president in China in a moment. When you order a 72 Dodge Dart Swinger with a special package of features, we'll offer you an automatic transmission at no extra charge. But some families prefer the convenience of a four-door sedan to the styling of a two-door hardtop. Introducing the 72 Dart Custom Door Sedan. Special package of features, and we'll offer you an automatic transmission at no extra charge. The Double Dart Automatic Special from Dodge. Tony can't seem to please Big Sister with her coffee. Sis, you've always hated my coffee, but now I found a great one. Folgers Coffee Crystals. Try it, sis. All right. Folgers looks darker and richer than this regular instant. Or this freeze-dried. Well? Well? Tastes so good. You hate to put it down. <laughs> uh -huh. Joni did it with Folgers Coffee Crystals. This is Bill Wardham in Los Angeles. There may have been a meeting in Peking between President Nixon and officials of North Vietnam. A Hong Kong newspaper claimed the meeting took place yesterday, but it had no report on the results. Not much has been said either about the meetings between the President and the Chinese Premier Cho Enlai, although a communique will be issued later tonight. Tom Jarrell has a report on the secrecy surrounding those talks.
invited members of the American News Corps to his villa in Hangzhou to pose for photographs and try to explain to them why he elected to cloak these summit talks in secrecy until the communique was announced. He explained he felt in dealing with the Chinese, it had to be done in an atmosphere which was quite different because the two countries had no diplomatic relations. He felt that whatever might be achieved in the talks might have been seriously jeopardized had information been leaked out on what was going on. With the Chinese, he explained, there was a new relationship which had to be established in an atmosphere of mutual trust. So to win their trust, he agreed to keep in confidence details of the summit talks, despite considerable pressure to give a demanding press information it felt it had the right to know. He claimed this was not censorship in his opinion, since some details would be given in the final communique from both sides. Merely a withholding of information, which he conceded, had seldom been done in summit talks before. He justified his decision to black out any news on the talks by saying agreement had been reached with the Chinese on some issues, which would have been seriously jeopardized and perhaps not achieved at all had he yielded to pressures to say what was going on. Tom Jarwell, ABC News, with the Presidential Party in China. Next. I'll begin. What's been lacking in substance so far on this trip has been compensated for in part by having the President of the United States appear publicly in spectacular surroundings with lots of cameras around. As the President, Mrs. Nixon, and Joe Enlai walked through the Huagong Park, there were generous dollops of photogenic children all around. The President stopped to shake hands with one of them, but the boy had a piece of candy in his right hand, so he offered the President his left. An international incident was avoided when someone took the kid's candy away. Feeding the giant goldfish from this bridge is on the must list of every tourist to Hangzhou. It's supposed to bring good luck. So the president, Mrs. Nixon, Henry Kissinger, and Joe Enlai dutifully cast their breadcrumbs upon the water. Then onto the West Lake. There was a boat waiting for the presidential party, waiting to take them to the island of three towers reflecting the moon, one of the lyrical names that somehow seems appropriate in these surroundings. The president peeled himself a tangerine. Mrs. Nixon was offered a hot towel. And both of them, together with Joe and Lai, waved to photographers as the boat pulled away. We are told that they ate walnut cakes, and sip dragon well tea during the cruise. On the island, the group strolled, enjoyed, and became, for a few minutes, part of the scenery. And the president approached his last full day in China. This is Ted Koppel, ABC News, Peking. Hangzhou is a lovely city of 800,000 people. Because of its atmosphere, it's often been called the Florence of China. Nowadays, Hangzhou is like the rest of China, regimented and disciplined, but the sheer physical beauty of its surroundings, famous and the gentle thing around it, this cannot be changed by philosophies and politics. When American journalists traveling with President Nixon arrived here from Peking, they found the people of Hangzhou casually strolling and sitting on the benches, communing with the West Lake. It was strange in the Mao work-oriented society not to find these people working. It was Saturday, and in the People's Republic of China, Saturday is a day of work. So perhaps Chinese officials here had been told to make things seem casual and relaxed for the Americans. The beauty of Hangzhou's buildings and gardens also remain. Its classic temples rival many of those seen anywhere in the world. This is the Lingying Temple Gardens in Hangzhou. It has a history going back more than a thousand years. On the slopes and in the caves of the temple gardens, there are more than 280 Buddhist figures made in different dynasties. The oldest go back to the year 951 AD. Now, Hangzhou is Mao Zedong's Key Biscayne, his show place. He likes important foreign visitors, such as the Nixons, to come here to see this beautiful little town and its natural wonders. Old, sick Chinese, with not much life left in them, are sent here to spend their final days. Amidst all the collective discipline, the drabness of China today, Hangzhou is heaven. 
This is Howard Tuckner, ABC News, Hank Chow in the People's Republic of China. Washington sources revealed today that President Nixon will begin his visit to Moscow on May 22nd and will stay there for about a week. This is a totally different kind of razor blade. It makes shaving easy. Now, I wouldn't dare do this with an ordinary blade, but Wilkinson has reinvented the razor blade, the bonded blade. Bonded permanently the precise shaving angle and exposure. But don't do it this way. Use the handle that comes with it. It's even easier. Safer, too. The Wilkinson Bonded Shaving System. It makes shaving easy. Harry Wilson hates to shave. So one Saturday morning, Edna Wilson decided to do it for him. She chose Rapid Shave. A shave cream so rich, so thick, he'd probably never feel the razor. And in 40 strokes, she shaved him clean. Oh, wow! How? Rapid Shave. For a shave so comfortable, you'll hardly feel the razor. Regular lime, menthol mint, and lubricating lather. For the second day in a row, Israeli forces have attacked Arab guerrilla positions in southern Lebanon. Israel acknowledges making new air attacks. Guerrilla spokesmen claim Israeli ground forces also crossed the border again. Here in New York, the UN Security Council met for three hours to consider the flare-up, but adjourned without taking any action. Nine Amer When publisher William conference in front of the union for building first to say to Mr. Lowe who's the publisher of this paper, that he has lied about me. Secondly, to say to you, uh, people of Manchester, whom he has insulted, that he's lied to you about me. And thirdly, to say to him that by attacking me, by attacking my wife, he has proved himself to be a gutless coward. This man doesn't walk, he calls. Newspaper publisher Loeb gave his reaction to Muskie's counterattack on Boston television station WNAC. My reaction is the senator was caught with his political pants down. He's trying to cover up by calling me names. And I long ago adopted Harry Truman's philosophy. You can't stand the heat, you have money business and politics or newspaper business, so I don't get excited about those things. That's the world of national news. I'm Sam Donaldson. The ABC Weekend News with Sam Donaldson has been brought to you by Palmolive Rapid Shave, Menthol Mint, Juicy Lime, Morning Fresh Regular.